uh, you all uh, must be wondering that why the term DNA fingerprint came into existence because it has been adopted from the real fingerprint, which was used for hundreds of years to have the uniqueness of every individual. In fact, if you see uh, the image, uh, that we would really wonder that uh, how uh, it has been invented that uh, every individual has a very unique DNA fingerprint. In fact, in the year 1858, Sir William James Herschel was a chief magistrate of Hubli district in Jangipur. He was the one uh, used this on uh, native contracts because of uh, the language which they cannot understand. And he was in a fear that whether they may uh, take away money or property. Uh, so in order to uh, have some records, so he has used that. But what is even more interesting is that uh, he didn't leave this or his colleagues did not leave that. And they have observed that for several years. And uh, in fact, after 160 years, so they have uh, published this paper in nature. You can imagine that a non-scientist publishing his observation in a topmost journal like uh, nature. Okay, so then it gives uh, the authenticity of the, uh, the technique. But when uh, Professor Alex Jeffrey, when he was working on his basic research, and suddenly he found that uh, when he hybridized uh, the human DNA with a class of repeats uh, from beta globin gene, and he suddenly found that uh, so every individual has a very unique DNA fingerprint pattern or DNA pattern. So later on, he named as a DNA fingerprinting. So this is how the every individual's uniqueness has been uh, observed. So subsequently, he has used this for several cases. The same year, he published this detail in, uh, in, in four different papers in, in the journal Nature. So while this was going on, the, um, yeah, we must be happy that uh, so India became the third country to develop its own probe. After Alec Jabri published this paper and Dr. Lalji Singh was working on his basic research, in the area of uh, sex determination in snakes. In snakes, there are three different kinds of snakes, primitive snake, intermediate, and highly advanced. In case of human, we have 46 chromosomes and 44 chromosomes are common between male and female and only chromosome, only pair, pair of chromosome is the sex chromosome, that's X and Y. In case of female, there will be two X and in male, one X and one Y chromosome. Uh, but in case of snakes, it's called as WZ chromosomes. Then the primitive snake, in human, you can see that X is a long chromosome and Y is very short. But in case of snake, the primitive snake will not see any difference between this Z and W chromosome. But in the intermediate snake, also will not see any size difference. But there, there's accumulation of this GATA repeat, what you see in the red color, GATA, GATA, is a tandemly repeated. But in case of uh, the highly evolved snake, you can see the difference between uh, w and Z chromosome. So this was his basic research. Once uh, the data was published by Alec Jeffrey, then he thought, let us use this and see whether uh, this probe also generate the individual specific DNA fingerprint. And uh, interestingly, he also found that uh, not only in human and many other species that is giving uh, the DNA fingerprinting pattern, mostly uh, they are individual specific. And this is one of the historical uh, uh, find uh, in historical slide where you can see that the very first case where he himself went and uh, gave the evidence to the court of law. There's a case from uh, Kerala, uh, Telicheri, where um, he's a, a contractor and uh, he uh, uh, convinced her that uh, he will marry he, uh, her and she became pregnant and the child was born. Then he refused to marry her saying that uh, yeah, this child is not uh, belongs to him. So, uh, so that's where she approached CCMB and she read about DNA fingerprint technology 
and uh, the sample was analyzed and uh, the data uh, the report was given and uh, dr kalaji singh himself went to the court of court uh, in telicherry and gave the evidence so, the, so historically so this is the very first case where dna fingerprinting evidence was produced in the court of law and in fact the where uh, this the center which uh, i am heading center for dna fingerprinting and tech uh, and diagnostics uh, uh, emerged from there and he visualized and uh, dr bargava was the then director of ccmb all thought that there could be a separate institute for tackling this issue uh, providing dna fingerprinting and also diagnostics of various human diseases that's how the center for dna fingerprinting and diagnostic have started and we are at the 25th years we are celebrating the silver jubilee uh, for the non uh, subject uh, participant just wanted to take you through the basics i mentioned that in human there are 46 chromosomes in the nucleus this is a 46 chromosome in somatic cell that means all the body cells of course the germ cell there will be half of it 23 chromosomes so this is called as nuclear genome in addition to that so uh, this is very important uh, in the coming slides i'll tell you so there is a organelle called mitochondria it's generally known as a power house of the cell because that's where the atp is produced in addition to that it has a large number of uh, applications uh the function uh in in a given cell there will be more mitochondria and uh, in a given mitochondria there will be large number of mitochondrial dna so in in a given cell you will find two copies of the nucleus you know can can Apologies, Dr. Sangarajan. You can. Sorry, you got muted. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry. Yes, mm -hmm. slide. Yeah. Ah, uh, in a given cell, as I was mentioning, two copies of nuclear genome, whereas in the mitochondria so there will be uh, in in the, the mitochondria there will be large number of mitochondrial dna hundreds of mitochondrial dna and uh, it has its own application which i'll uh, tell you later but it's also important to understand how the genome is inherited for example somatic cell i said there are 46 chromosomes this is the female karyotype where there are two x chromosome in addition to 22 pairs of autosomes uh this is the male karyotype in addition to 22 uh, pairs of autosome there's one x chromosome and one y chromosome the y chromosome is the one which consists of gene called sry which is essential for determining the male sex of the individual okay uh these autosomes are common there's no difference between male and female but when there's meiosis when the cell is dividing in the germ cell then there will be only half of that chromosome goes into the uh, germ cell so where you have 23 pairs and here in the germ cell if you see in the egg only 23 okay 46 again this 23 so that means there's a reduction of the chromosome same way in the in the male in the sperm you will have only 23 chromosome but the division of this the segregation of the chromosomes are not well defined it's a random so that's why every individual for example this chromosome uh, from here you see that there could be chromosome 1 uh, this from this pair only one of this goes there from here this chromosome goes there but in the next cell division instead of this this may go with the combination of this so that's the reason every individual you know, even the family all the same there are even uh, five or uh, six or uh, eight son or daughter every individual is uh, different except for the monozygotic twin because they will uh, have exactly the same genome okay so the important point here is that 
uh, the egg will carry only half of the genome and the sperm will carry only half of the genome at the time of fertilization become 46 chromosomes that means 23 chromosomes goes from the father 23 from the mother or 50% of the genome from father 50% from the mother uh, first look at that the mitochondria which i was mentioning it uh, the egg will have the mitochondria whereas in the sperm the mitochondria will be the meat piece of the sperm at the time of fertilization it remain outside even if it goes then it will get degraded therefore we all get the mitochondria or mitochondrial DNA only from the mother. So it's maternally inherited. So that's a good point to remember. If you talk about some of the fact uh, about the DNA, it's very stable. If you eat it, it will become uh, a single strand, because DNA is double strand. And if you allow it to cool down, it become double strand again. And it can be isolated from any biological material, blood, any part of the tissue, saliva, uh, sperm or uh, air root, bone, any biological material. So uh, saliva, urine, hair, teeth, bone, any kind of tissue. Okay, And uh, so at every exchange, so if you talk about um, the forensics, when somebody touch or drink coffee or uh, smoke, so you'll find the epithelial cell in wherever they touch or they, wherever the uh, tea, coffee they drink on the rim of the um, glass or teacup. Okay, so that gives valuable sample to analyze and get uh, the um, DNA profile. And it doesn't change with the age. If you take DNA of a just born baby and uh, uh, generate profile or you wait till 50 years or 60 years, again, generate the profile, you will not see any difference. Uh, there'll be some difference except in case of, for example, cancer. So the cancer tissue might undergo a lot of uh, rearrangement. Only there you might see uh, some variation. Otherwise, uh, generally you don't see much of uh, variations. And the pattern of an uh, individual from every tissue, if you take blood, if you take a tooth, if you, uh, tooth pulp, in fact, or if you take air root or bone, if you generate the profile, all of them should be identical. And most importantly, it shows variation between individual because we have huge amount of variation. If you take single nucleotide polymorphism, you will find, although we are all uh, having the same genome and we are uh, up to 99 point 6% similarity, but only 0.4% difference between uh, individual. But that 0.4% actually gives 4 million differences between uh, individuals. So, uh, so that is very, very important when you do DNA-based analysis, shows a lot more variation. So if you look at the variations, I will not go into detail about uh, the chromosomal level, but if you look at the DNA level variations, you'll find there could be a tandem deletion or duplication, okay, as you see here. So there's a duplication of BC, right? So BC and become a BC. So there could be a deletion, there could be an inversion from one direction to other direction that happens in mega base level. But if you come down to kilo base level, you'll have uh, ALU uh, element insertion, there's a mini satellites, line one, and there are many repetitive sequences. But if you come down at a small uh, stretch up repeat, like short tantrum repeats or STRs, what you see here, uh, CT80, that repeat for many times. Uh, in one chromosome may have some 10 repeat, other chromosome may have 15 repeat or 20 repeat. But if you come down to single nucleotide level, there could be, as I mentioned, about 4 million difference. Uh, as you see here, there's a, uh, the sequence is common between these two sequence, but only difference is here at the single nucleotide level. Uh, here you see uh, there's a C, and whereas in the other sequence, there's a T. So that makes the difference, right? And when the DNA fingerprinting was developed, it was based on 
the southern hybridization method or harp will be based method. It's a restriction fragment link polymorphism. And if you take uh, two individuals DNA, and if you use restriction enzyme, as all of you are aware that each restriction enzyme will have a specific uh, motive. For example, if you use eco R1 as an uh, enzyme, it recognizes wherever there's a G, A, A, T, T, C. So it cuts in that position, okay? So if you take this as an example, two different fragment, there is one eco R1 side, this is another eco R1 side, this is the third eco R1 side. Okay, here there is one equal on side. Here there is a single nucleotide polymorphism variant. Instead of there is a A, there is a G here. Okay, A to G um, variation. So, uh, so in this case, uh, when you use equal one, it will cut the DNA at uh, this position, at this position, and this position. So you will get one, two, three, and four fragment. Whereas here it's not cut because there's a change in nucleotide, so eco R1 will not recognize that as a as, uh, uh, motive, so that it will not cut here. So instead of these two uh, fragments, uh, the individual who has this uh, kind of uh, variation, they'll get only one back. So that's how the variations are generated. So this is a process, once you have a DNA uh, isolated and that will be treated with restriction enzymes, therefore the DNA will become fragmented. Then that would be um, uh, used to separate the, as per the size of the DNA fragment using gel electrophoresis. Then that will be transferred onto nylon membrane because it, the gel is not stable. So while transferring, you make the DNA into single strand because DNA is double strand it with sodium hydroxide. Then uh, the nylon membrane will have the DNA, which is in a single strand. Then you take a DNA probe. This, in this case, it's easy to remember, GA, TA, repeat. Uh, use this as a probe, but label that with radioactive material. Therefore, wherever it finds its complementary sequence, then uh, it will anneal and it stick to that, become uh, a double strand there but it, uh, at the end of it, it has the radioactive material. Therefore, when you expose that onto X-ray film, it um, emits the radiation. Therefore, you will see after developing the film, you will see that band. That means these are the place where the probe which we use, actually DNA, when you run, it will, it will initially show as a smear. There will not be any band. So once you hybridize with the probe, which is labeled with radioactive material, it hybridizes, and uh, after a few days, once you develop it and it gives the band, that means this is a place where the probe which you used have hybridized, okay? Then you can see that each individual shows very unique, ba unique banding pattern. That means, so each individual has different, depending upon the restriction enzyme used. For example, eco R1, if you take, that means each individual have different position, uh, Somebody might have the restriction site, somebody might may not have the restriction site. So that's the reason it is giving banding pattern like this. So now we come to the STRs because these are the technique which was developed earlier, but is not being used because it's very, very time consuming and it takes several days, at least about one week to 10 days to get it. But now it become very simple PCR based method. So where you have the repetitive sequence, for example, here. There are three different kind of repeats. It's a CT repeat, dinucleotide. This is a CAG repeat, trinucleotide. And this is a tetranucleotide repeat, CTA. Uh, there is no different, there's no uh, interfering sequence. Yes, they're all tandemly repeated. But uh, on both the side, flanking to this sequence, you have very unique uh, sequence. So one can design primer on the both the end of the, uh, the repeat, then use that as a primer to amplify. For example, somebody has 15 repeat here, other person has 20 repeat. So there will be a small band and other one will have a, a bigger band depending upon the size of the repeats, which I'll tell you in coming slide. Uh, here again, it's very important. 
for understanding how the DNA fingerprinting can be interpreted. For example, I was mentioning earlier that uh, we have um, uh, inherited 50% of the genome from father, 50% from the mother. Okay, so this is what is shown here. Let's let's look at here. Okay, this uh, there are three shapes. This is the pedigree: father, mother, and their three children, one son and two daughters. Okay, let's take here, and he inherited. You consider this as a one of the autosome, 50% from the father and the remaining 50% from the mother. And in this case, uh, she inherited 50% from the father and 50% mother. And uh, this is, you assume that this is a mitochondria, mitochondrial DNA, there's no paternal contribution. So all the mitochondria, all the three have inherited the mitochondrial DNA only from the mother. And of course, about Y chromosome, I didn't mention earlier, although I mentioned uh, in the beginning, but the Y chromosome is present only in the male because that is essential for making individual as a male. So that you will find only in the male and you can see all the males will have uh, the same chromosomes inherited uh, as such because it doesn't have uh, homology anywhere except in the pseudo-autosomal region. Therefore, it goes generation after generation uh, without much change, okay? So this itself will give you some clue. And on the right side, if you look at the DNA profile, the actual DNA profile, now you can imagine 50%, okay? So that means if you take one particular locus, one region you are amplifying, and trying to see whether it's matching, one band is matching with the father, one band from another, because this is two copies, right? Uh, let us look at uh, the this particular locus, the one blue one. Okay, this is mother's profile, the first lane. This is uh, sons, and this is uh, sorry, uh, this is sons, and this is fathers. Okay, if you take this locus, the son has two alleles. Okay, in your locus, two alleles. So of that, one allele has come from the mother. Okay, consider this. Okay, this has come from father. Let's say this has come from the mother. Okay, so it's matching with the mother. Other one, it has come from the father. Okay, so this green one. Okay, same way if you look at here, one band is matching with the mother, other one is matching with the father. Okay, same way all of these. If you look at every single locus, then you can actually you can precisely tell whether he is the father of the child or she is the mother of the child, okay? So that precise one can able to say because this is nothing but the variation, nothing but the repeat number present in that particular locus, okay? So the longer one means this has a more number of repeat. Shorter one has a very small number of repeat. Sometimes you may see only one band, okay? That's, that's a homozygous. That means both father and mother have the same ali and contribute to the same ali. Okay, so this is the basis for anybody. If you have doubt, we can discuss towards end of my talk. Right? On the other side, you can again take this particular locus. Okay, same locus, but different individual. Now you see, again, there's a mother, father, and the child. Now there are two alis. One ali is matching with the mother. This allele, if he is a father, he should have either match with this or match with that. Same way here, one allele is matching with uh, the mother, and this allele, if he is the father, he should have been either here or here. Okay, there are many which wherever there's a error mark. So you can precisely say 99 statistically 99.99 percent precisely you can say whether he is a father of the child or she is a mother of the child or uh, uh, this child belongs to this family or not. So there are many ways of interpreting. So this is the very straightforward STR profile which can uh, establish the identity of the individual or paternity or maternity of the individual. So what is the advantage of doing this? I already mentioned that it requires very small quantity of uh, DNA, even very highly deg uh, degraded DNA also can be used because you are amplifying very, very small region. 
and uh, you can get the result in 24 hours multiplexing as you say seen several several bands and uh, one can do uh, automation and this is what being u- uh, used universally all over the world this is standard str kit is used for uh, forensic application so now let's look at very briefly about the characteristic feature of the y chromosome so when it is used when the father is not available one can use any of his paternally related individuals so almost all the individuals in the, the family they are paternally related will have the same profile and tracing the uh, paternal lineage is used you want to identify the male dna you can use and there is a mixture of male and female dna you want to precisely identify the male dna you can use and the paternity without uh, mother sample um because of uh, lack of time i'll very briefly uh, go i'll not go into detail about that and this is again uh, the profile generated using autosomal marker where you see that father and the and the son having the same str profile that means there is no difference in the y chromosome there is one y chromosome it went as such from father to son then it go to a uh, grandson and sometimes you have the mixed sample can able to identify how many individuals actually involved in the crime so this is autosome it's very difficult because a lot of uh, alleles are mixed here but this can tell you that how many individuals so this is one individual this is another individual the third individual so one can able to make use of this for precisely identifying how many individual and who are the individuals involved in the crime and this i must say that uh, how historically that uh, jefferson was the third president of us uh, as uh, has been uh, uh, has been identified as a real father of one of his slave son so if you look at uh, this slide that will able to understand how old the case is and he was Uh, he lived between 1743 to 1826 he was the third he was president he had a slave called sally hamming and one of her son easton uh, he resembled phenotypically with the jefferson uh, but what happened that uh, there was a lot of review about that and uh, about a decade ago or uh, maybe little more than a decade ago there are three teams Uh, one from uh, Oxford, uh, Chris Tyler Smith uh, from Leicester, uh, Mark Javelin, he was a colleague of Alec Jeffrey, and Peter Deniff from Leiden. So they uh, joined together and used several Y chromosome markers and uh, tried to understand whether Jefferson is the real father of uh, Easton. so they used different kind of marker this is a biallelic marker like snp a r g r c r t something like that this is a microsatellite markers or str markers which i was describing and this is a mini satellite markers uh, the, uh, there was no uh, immediate lineage of jefferson because he had one son and he died in the car accident so they used his paternal uncle's lineage This is a president jefferson his father father's brother and each number represent one generation so that means they are trying to identify whether jefferson is the real father of easton after six seven generations you can see the power of the y chromosome marker so then this is the easton's again lineage and these two are another sub uh, suspects you can compare that with the color code which they have uh, published this paper uh, you can see that except there is one mutation otherwise this profile is uh, exactly the same as this lineage these are all different and they concluded that uh, yes uh, sally among sons eastern uh, uh, they are the, the jefferson was actually father of uh, east you can imagine after several generation so of course we use this technology for tracing the human origin and migration so we also identified 
the Andaman tribes have migrated from Africa about 65,000 years ago. So, so these are routinely used for our population genetic study. This is very recent one. When uh, Saddam Hussein was caught, uh, his phenotype was totally different. So they used his son's uh, profile and compared and identified, yes, he's the, uh, uh, he's the Saddam Hussein. Now I'll tell you about mitochondrial DNA quickly. As all of you are aware, this is the powerhouse of the cell and there are a lot of activities, metabolism goes on and uh, it goes through uh, mother, maternally inherited. The black one you will see, the circle is female, this is a male. Now you say grandmother, grandmother passing to all her daughters and sons, but the sons cannot transmit to the next generation, whereas daughters can transmit. That means all of these individuals have the same mitochondrial DNA. So why it's used? And I'll give you an basic example where this can be used. So this is one of the uh, forensic case where they have uh, uh, the, the background of the case is that uh, somebody has been killed and uh, thrown in a well. It was more than a decade ago. Uh, it was done in the forensic laboratory using the STR-based method. Uh, but the DNA was very badly degraded. Therefore, they could not get the profile. Only small fragments have amplified, but not uh, these fragments. Therefore, it's very difficult to identify whether it's uh, the identity of the individual. There are five families that are claiming uh, this deceased individual, I'm thinking that government might give compensation. Okay. Uh, then they have approached us and uh, we used mitochondrial DNA. This is one family, for example, shown here. There are two brothers and the father. And father, of course, uh, the mitochondrial DNA uh, definitely it not comes from the father. Therefore, we did not include that in the mitochondrial DNA. And uh, this sequence and this sequence are the real brother. Therefore, they will have identical sequence. And the middle one is the mitochondrial DNA of the disease individual. So why the mitochondrial DNA is useful here? Because that's a circular in shape. There are more copy number that was be used for forensic application. And because it's intact, smaller uh, genome, we can amplify small fragment and one can construct the complete sequence. So in this case, you can see there are three dots. That means these are the place where there's a difference between the real brothers and the disease individual. You can see uh, there's a T time in here, and also the real brother has time here after G, right? Whereas here there's a C. Same way here there's a A and A, whereas this uh, uh, C, right? Here there's a A between these two T's, again A between these two T's, and whereas here's a G. So with this small stretch of sequence, you find three nucleotide different, then you can imagine will amplify up at, at least one KB region. There will be a lot more variation. Definitely saying that this man, the deceased person, is not belongs to this family. And it's also used for various medical legal applications where the organ transplantation being done and uh, some state, state uh, that uh, both donor and recipient should be blood related. So in that sense, uh, autosomes are used, mitochondria DNA are used because if both donors and recipients are maternally related. So here you see that uh, the donor and recipients have uh, the identical sequence. So no problem here. But sometimes, they, although they say that they are maternally related, but you can see there are four differences. Okay, then it clearly says that they cannot be maternally uh, related. So this was one of the uh, CBA case where somebody has been killed and uh, thrown in one of the IIT campus and the bones were recovered after several months. And you can see that uh, this is the skeletal remain, bone sample, the miss missing uh, individual's bone sample, the mother, and this is a father's. So there are three, uh, 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 three uh, panels. 
you can see that this bone and mother's sequence are identical. G as a T in this position, whereas father, of course, you know that father's contribution not that there's a C. Uh, here there are two A's, both in, in the disease individual and the mother. Here there's one deletion. Same way, these two are identical and this is different, confirming that this uh, bone sample actually belongs to uh, this family or uh, she's a mother of the disease individual. Now, briefly, I'll come to tracing the ethnicity. Okay, so where it's very, very important, but it's not being used very effectively uh, in the border security cases where somebody come from other country, do some crime, and if you find any biological material, you can actually say, you can find out whether this, uh, the individual who involved in this crime belongs to either India or uh, outside India. You can see this is a Y chromosome haplogroup. Haplogroups are developed based on the mutation, different set of mutation present on the Y chromosome. You can clearly see that the Africans have different set of uh, haplogroup like uh, E, F, and uh, G, also A and B, whereas uh, India, we have different set of haplogroup uh, here, uh, East Asia, different haplogroup, Europe, different haplogroup, you can have, uh, again, North and South uh, America have different haplogroup. Um, this is just one example to show that, again, they studied uh, Jefferson's uh, Y chromosome, and uh, they found that see, actually belongs to European lineage it must be from uh, long back his uh, forefathers must have migrated from europe so we also have shown that the european romas have actually gone from india about 1400 years ago because they have unique haplogroup which is which was found in in india same way we also shown that the siddhi populations who are also in, in hyderabad they are in gujarat they're also in Karnataka. So we traced their origin and found that uh, they're actually the Bandu speaking, uh, Bandu is the language speaking Africans who have been brought by Portuguese traders about 15th to 19th century. Same way, the mitochondrial DNA, again, you can see large number of, of haplogroup and uh, each country and continent have different set of uh, haplogroups. And interestingly, you might have read in the news that Prince Williams, uh, uh, particularly his mother, Diana, has come from uh, South Asian ancestry. More details one can study in the, in the Google. If you uh, search, you can see uh, more detail about that. One can also use, use the SNPs. We talked about STR short and the repeats, very useful for immediate relatives, father, mother, son, and uh, um, grandfather, so on, uh, Y chromosome mitochondria. Now one can also use single nucleotide polymorphic markers for the same application. So this is one of our study where we use, uh, so in this case, you can actually uh, identify to the precise that uh, which group this person might belong to uh, using about 1 million SNP markers. So we use that efficiently to, to look at how the Indian population structures are. We can clearly see every population clustering as a unique uh, group. That's because we follow endogamy for the last several thousands of years. Endogamy means marrying within the group. So we did um, principal component analysis where you can see these are all Indian groups and these are Europeans, Africans, Yoruban, and this is Chinese. You can see these are all Indians. Okay, so this is the Kashmir Pandit, and uh, at the, this end you will see Great Andamanis. They are in between, and this is Siddhi population because they have come from Africa and they have admixed with the Indian. They are falling somewhere in between. But without seeing anybody, if you have drop of blood and if you isolate DNA and uh, do this analysis, and if the person is European, then you will see that. The person cluster here. If he's a Chinese, he may cluster here, and um, Africans somewhere here, right? Are Indians in this cluster? Precisely, Kashmir Pandit will be here, and other population as well. 
this thing. So this is just one example. So we have subsequently studied large number of population. You can clearly cluster every population as unique because we acquired unique mutation because population marrying for the last uh, for, uh, for the last two thousand years marrying within the group and whatever the mutation arose in each population that is restricted in those population. That's what make every population as uh, very unique. So uh, now I'll also give you examples of ancient DNA, but if the sample is very old, thousands of year old sample, is there any way to, to find out uh, which uh, uh, family or which population or which country this uh, diseased person might belong to? So this is one of the example <clears throat> where we studied a group of uh, bone samples, which was found in a lake called Rukun that was about 5,000 meter above the sea level and uh, in Himalaya. There are a large number of bone samples. And we found, <clears throat> we analyzed those samples <clears throat> and found interestingly that uh, there are three different group of samples. Of course, we studied very limited number of samples. So one group, interestingly, they are Mediterranean people. And you can see this well spread uh, here. So this is a group A, Indian claim, and this is a group B, European, particularly French and uh, the Mediterranean, and one group belongs to uh, Southeast Asia. So, so clearly this bone sample, we estimated this was about a thousand year old. Okay, you can imagine. There are many such examples. So uh, because of time limit, I just kept only one um, uh, study. And if you look at overall the application, some of them have already shown that uh, I'll again will tell you in the coming slide. This I showed you. And uh, this is one of the, again, uh, important uh, study where you can see that uh, how the technology can be used in the medical legal applications. So this is the, uh, the samples which was the, the person who has been diagnosed with breast cancer and a sample has been sent to pathology lab. The report came and she thought that uh, this is not her own tissue sample. So if she wanted to confirm whether uh, the sample really belongs to her or not. So the DNA was isolated from paraffin embedded uh, block. And this is the fresh blood sample obtained from her. And the DNA profile was generated and was, and you can see that both were identical, right? So even one can go up to that level where if there is a doubt, you can actually confirm whether that tissue belongs to you or somebody else, then it gives very, very attendance. Uh, this I'll skip. And uh, here, this is a, a real forensic uh, application where uh, there was a rape case and uh, you can see this is a victim's profile and this is a general swab and this is the person who has been caught uh, must be involved in this crime. You can compare this three profile and see this is a victim and this uh, swab, you can eliminate this and find the other one is matching with uh, the person who has been caught must have been involved in this. Okay, so that tells that the DNA profile can be used for this application. Of course, this is the same sample used with the Y chromosome markers. As you see here, all of them are identical. And uh, quickly in two, three minutes, I'll show some of the high profile cases, which was earlier done by CCMB, if there is a time, two, three minutes. Can I go ahead? Yeah, fine now. We're sure, fine now. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. very, very quickly. Uh, that you might, somebody might uh, uh, study in the news that uh, long back, uh, the former uh, Prime Minister of India, uh, Rajiv Gandhi, has been killed in Tamil Nadu, but uh, Sri Paramudur when he was uh, touring. And she was the one who had bomb in her belt. And uh, her sample was compared with her uh, 
family and identify the identity of this uh, individual. Of course, the samples have been collected from the belt she was carrying. And the, the mastermind behind uh, the entire uh, event, Sivarasan, who migrated from Sri Lanka and uh, his parent sample has been brought from Sri Lanka and has been compared. Of course, he has been shot killed in Bangalore and, uh, and his identity was, uh, was, uh, was done. This is Tandoor Madhra case in, uh, in, in Delhi. And uh, this is one of the important cases where uh, there was a negotiation. Actually, uh, Dr. Lali Singh was telling that the government that we need an institute unless otherwise the government promise then we'll not take up the case. So that's how the CDFD uh, uh, came into existence. So, so the identity of her, the Naina Sani has been done. This is another case of uh, the former uh, Chief Minister of Punjab. Again, uh, the person who involved in this crime has been identified using this technology. Uh, many Samijis, you must have heard that they involve in a lot of such uh, crime. And one such case was uh, Sami Premananda, who was basically uh, from Sri Lanka. He had an ashramam in a place called Pudukotai in Tamil Nadu. And uh, in that ashramam, there are many girls. One girl escaped from there. Um, she, when she escaped, she was pregnant and... Uh, and fetus was aborted, the whole fetus was sent to CCM at the time. We took the sample and uh, we did the profile. And in fact, that was the first uh, STR-based profile we have established. And uh, based on the report, it has been given double in investment. Uh, this is one of the case where the, uh, the Singapore airline crash was in, uh, in Taiwan. There are two uh, Indians one, one from uh, Mumbai, another one from uh, Hyderabad, and they called their parents to get the profile of theirs and send it to them. And uh, they generated the profile of all the deceased individuals, compared the body and uh, handed over to them. So we did that case within 24 hours. That was, of course, very long time. Uh, the sample came from, uh, from Mumbai, night, nine o'clock. Uh, by next day, around two o'clock, we send the report. Sometime, this also can happen that uh, there was a human DNA found in the Ayurveda drug. There are several drugs that have been sent to uh, CCMB and uh, some drug we found is a human DNA, some not. Uh, that's because they also mix the bone, human bone, into the some of the uh, Ayurvedic drugs. Uh, so that's it. Uh, have uh, any question? I'll be happy to uh, discuss. Once again, my apologies for uh, no the delay in uh, giving talk. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Tangaraj. It was a wonderful presentation, and uh, um, thank you so much for being with us here today. Well, before we move on to question and answer from the audience, may I please uh, invite Dr. G.V. Jagdamba, the former Joint Director DNA Division of APFSL and Head of Forensic Science and National Police Academy. She will speak about the role of DNA in civil, criminal, and wildlife forensics. Dr. Jagdamba. Hello. Hello. Yes, you can. I we, we can hear you. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir, Dr. Tangra, sir, and uh, uh, a very good evening uh, to the elite gathering. It is very noteworthy and scientific lecture by Dr. Tangra, sir. You you all uh, must have been enlightened by his talk. We are all aware that uh, Dr. Tangras is the director of CDFB, previously scientist at different levels in CCMB with vast experience in the field. We all, including uh, Dr. Tangras, would remember Dr. Lalji Singh, ex-director of CCMB, 
and uh, who is the founder of this genome project along with Dr. KPC Gandhi Garu. We, the forensic people, are more aware practically of Dr. Tangraj sir's uh, great contribution in our field. Several cases could be solved because of uh, his knowledge and requisite help in the times of necessity. I must uh, thank him profusely for that. And uh, we could solve many a medical legal case to the best satisfaction scientifically uh, <clears throat> and also prove them in the course of law. Justice was done in almost all the cases. Uh, this uh, webinar on DNA fingerprinting and its medical legal applications has been set for today uh, in the exactly right time. Medical legal uh, cases are on the high increase in the modern times. This knowledge has to be spread across the globe by webinars such as this. DNA profiling technique is the best tool and a potential friend in investigations and casework in the forensic science field. The types of cases generally include both civil and uh, criminal in nature and also in cases uh, relating to wildlife forensics. Uh, apart uh, from the prime role of uh, DNA typing in the field of diagnostics, it has a very vital role in uh, solving several civil disputes and uh, criminal cases, and also in investigating wildlife poaching cases, and so also in determining uh, uh, pedigree for seeds or livestock breeds. So um, uh, for the benefit of uh, audience and to uh, remember some of uh, the sensational cases which we have dealt in our laboratory, I would like to share. If you can I share the screen, please? Sure, uh, ma'am, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, there should be a green button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, saying share screen. Once yes. you click, once you click on that, if uh, uh. multiple windows are open, then you can click on the window you want to present. Uh, that should be your PPT, I guess. Yes, this is the PPT yeah. I'm sharing. And, yeah, and just yeah. press share. Yeah. Yes. Um, press share. Press. That is blue button at the bottom of that mini window that has opened. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. On the right side. It's not uh, coming on this screen. Uh -huh. uh, you, you are able to see this? Uh, my window? Uh, not yet, ma'am. Not yet. Huh? Okay. Yeah. I'm just uh, saying this. Wait. Wait a moment. No problem. Is it okay, is, yeah. okay, that's not a problem. Something is wrong here somewhere. Uh, Yeah, share screen. Yeah, now it is. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, we cannot see it, ma'am. Yeah, now? No, not you can see it. No. Okay. Okay. no, no. Yes. Now we can. Sure. Yeah. Yeah.
Yes. Uh, in civil cases, some sensational cases uh, we have solved. Several hundreds of cases, of course, in uh, our previous years, child swapping cases, where uh, <clears throat> yes. In one case, uh, one person has lodged a false complaint actually with the police that his newborn child, a male child was swapped and uh, the hospital authorities were uh, giving him a female child. So the, uh, such cases, there were several cases in government hospitals where uh, this child swapping uh, was a I mean, serious issue. The blood samples from the uh, disputed child and uh, the reported uh, parents will be collected in such cases as you know. And uh, the DNA test confirms the true parenthood of uh, that uh, those uh, parents. So in in this case, again uh, the parenthood of uh, this Mr. Rajaya is uh, confirmed and uh, bringing this uh, light to the falsehood of this complaint. Actually, like this, uh, many cases were solved. Then. Uh, in another case, one girl was missing from a family and she was uh, traced at a different place at a very later time after several years. So she was grown and uh, she could not be, I mean, immediately recognized. So in uh, such cases also, the parenthood of the true parenthood of uh, the girl was also identified. So like that... Uh, <clears throat> There are uh, several cases like that. Uh, in each uh, civil dispute, we have uh, several examples like that we could uh, solve. In uh, criminal cases, where the blood stains from the victim's garments or on the weapon or from the uh, offense where uh, the place where the offense took place, all these uh, things, they could be uh, taken up and uh, the, the culprit uh, can be easily recognized by uh, conducting the DNA test of that uh, um, sample as well as from the suspect and uh, the victim person. In rape cases, in several rape cases from the seminal stains of the victim, uh, seminal stains from the garments of the victim or the um, uh, swabs or any material which is collected by the doctor uh, that will be submitted in the lab from that also we can very easily pinpointedly identify the culprit in even in gang rape cases we could identify uh, both the persons in uh, one case like this uh, and uh, in this occasion we can just uh, mention about uh, this blue dress clinton levinsky case sensational case there also, because of uh, this DNA fingerprinting, of course, uh, there in their laboratory, they have conducted and uh, found. Uh, so we can say that everyone is equal before law, DNA, and all that. Right? There are several cases, uh, murder cases and all that. This is uh, the classic case. And uh, in one uh, sensational case in our area, where uh, one uh, uh, family, uh, he was uh, the... Chief Engineer of South Central Railway, one Mr. P. R. Seth. The, that was a sensational case where all the family members, four family members, were killed and uh, burnt in a car. <clears throat> uh, from those, uh, uh, I mean, bodies, we could uh, collect uh, samples like uh, the internal organs or from the bones and all that. We could collect the biological material and from uh, their uh, 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 blood relatives, we could solve the case. Not only this, uh, we could uh, identify, trace the criminal also in this case. And uh, because of uh, this uh, DNA report only, the culprit was given the capital punishment in this case. This was one of the first uh, sensational cases our laboratory took up. So in some other uh, civil cases like this, where uh, family... I mean, visa uh, cases and all that, the family relationship 
between uh, the people like in this case uh, one uh, mother and son their true relationship was established and uh, the embassy of italy uh, they have cleared the family visa and in uh, civil cases like this uh, organ transplantation in those cases where uh, the bl close blood relatives only sh should give their uh, organ for transplantation in such cases also dna fingerprinting uh, tests we conducted in our laboratory and we have uh, established their relationship or establishing not their relationship like that it could uh, be solved those cases there are uh, several other cases okay and uh, in wildlife uh, poaching cases or uh, uh, the uh, in cases uh, one such classic case where the tiger skins were put to sale in at one place and the vendors duly they were arrested because uh, it is national animal and uh, its skin should not be sold and all that so they were arrested and the investigation of course followed in this case uh, there was a suspicion that the skins on scale uh, on the on the sale were not of tiger okay so uh, we have conducted several tests in our uh, laboratory also and we took the help of uh, ccmb and uh, uh, to know to which animal exactly it uh, belongs to that uh, test also we could conduct on comparison of uh, the exact molecular signature of vast number of known animal species which are available in ccmb in their, in their database they were generated and maintained by ccmb you know? so there uh, we could uh, we, we we took their help and we could solve this case so finally the result is that uh, none of them were of tigers mean like this this in this case uh, five samples we have taken and uh, one three and four they were painted dog skins and uh, two and five were painted with cow skins and uh, in another interesting case where a national bird was uh, being cooked at one place so police uh, seized that material and sent it to fsl to know whether it was really of peacock or not so uh, here also we could conduct some of the tests and to confirm uh, its um, origin we took the help of uh, ccmb where uh, ccmb alone has the capability to undertake uh, such cases we uh, we could establish the identity using universal primers and uh, they have concluded that the source of dna isolated from this flesh was of an indian pea fowl species specifically so uh, this was uh, this case was also confirmed like this uh, there are uh, several applications uh, in forensic field we have uh, several applications like this it is a very broad cross section of disciplines including human forensic forensic science diagnostic medicine family relationship analysis animal and plant sciences wildlife forensics there are various various applications we know <clears throat> uh, there is a potential application in the plant sciences also to uh, so include the determination of uh, trait markers the purity purity of uh, their traits that can be identified and uh, it is uh, um, uh, dna typing has considerable potential in the animal sciences for species and individual animal identification as i was uh, mentioning in the previous cases also finally we have uh, this application in wildlife poaching we have several cases we have seen several celebrities uh, are also included in that so like this in many many cases we have uh, this application of uh, dna profiling and we could uh, solve several sensational cases so finally i would like to uh, say that uh, we have we have come a long way to know and identify the most primitive at the most dependable evidence in a world which is round the end is always the beginning hence to know dna is to know the very beginning or the end of the evidence of uh, creation itself which is dependable decisive and final okay so finally 
I must uh, thank Dr. K. P. C. Gandhi Garu, the founder of Truth Labs and the ex-director uh, KPFSL, and also the co-founder of this Genome Project for giving me this opportunity to share my views and to speak a few words after the fantastic webinar by Dr. K. Tangraj. Thank you, sir, and thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jagdamba. Uh, this was very nicely put, uh, the applications of DNA fingerprinting, and you spoke um, with utmost grace and explaining us the relevance of the DNA fingerprinting in modern age as well. Um, so thank, thank you so you. much for sharing your time with us. Thanks and now, um, Faba, along with, in collaboration with Genome Foundation, is proud to announce a workshop on DNA fingerprinting. And this time we are bringing a hybrid mode we are bringing only the virtual workshop, or if you also want physical hands-on training, there is an additional fee and an add-on can be applied for. And to introduce you all about this upcoming workshop very briefly, uh, may I please invite Ms. Aparna Kaja, a director of Genome Foundation, who comes with academic background of MS in University of Pennsylvania. She worked as a research scientist and research safety coordinator at Baylor College of Medicine, and Veterans Affairs Medical Center, Houston, respectively. Ms. Kaja. Good evening, everyone. Very happy to be part of this eminent talk given by eminent scientist, Dr. Tangarajan. Uh, I feel very fortunate uh, today uh, to say that I, uh, Dr. Tangarajan was my gu guide, along with uh, Dr. Lalji Singh, three decades back, that is in 1994 and 95, who taught me DNA isolations, PCRs, and also DNA fingerprinting techniques. Thank you very much, sir, for considering our request and giving this wonderful talk for benefit of the present day students. Uh, Genome Foundation is a nonprofit company established under Section 25 of Companies Act, founded by a group of eminent molecular biologists, late Dr. Lalji Singh and late Dr. P.M. Bhargava and a renowned forensic scientist, Dr. Gandhi P. C. Kaza, besides former secretary DST, Dr. Palle Ramarao, and eminent medical professional, Dr. Kakarla Zubarao, and others. The present chairman is Dr. C. Rangarajan, former governor RBI and gov government of AP, and also former economic advisor to the Prime Minister of India. Genome Foundation, as you can see, uh, you, you can see in the shared screen, uh, is a congregation of highly accomplished scientists and committed public service of professionals who serve the nation with very high integrity and commitment. Genome Foundation is currently engaged in, you can see the services on the screen, uh, in uh, genetic diagnostics services like uh, pre-implantation, genetic screening, um, aneuploidy screening, carrier testing, and uh, other screenings, also genetic counseling, DNA forensics, research, training and skill development workshops like today's. It is working in collaboration with many clinicians, research, researchers, hospitals, and educational institutes around the world globally to identify and diagnose common and rare genetic disorders in the Indian population. We also conduct webinars for public awareness regularly. We provide hands-on training and skill development workshops to national and international students in the fields of molecular diagnostics and uh, DNA forensics and cytogenetics. We also give guidance for dissertation and research products to, pro projects to students. Our laboratory is well equipped with state-of-the-art equipment located at Banjara Hills, Hyderabad. You can see the complete address over there. And also the uh, information about the phone numbers and websites and emails is, email is also given on the screen. All services are offered at affordable cost and genetic counseling is offered free of cost by certified doctors and seasoned scientists to patients and their families. I request all present students to avail this opportunity um, and uh, attend and please tune into these workshops uh, and hear to some adventurous cases Truth Labs and Genome Foundation has solved in real life using techniques like DNA fingerprinting along with other molecular biology, biology molecular diagnostic techniques, because it's a great opportunity. As a sequel to this webinar, Genome Foundation will be organizing 
series of workshops both in virtual and offline mode starting with a virtual dna fingerprinting shop in the last week of october 2021 the details of workshop uh, will be given by ms gargi deshmukh scientist in charge and dna expert of chilom foundation thank you so much ma'am for the introduction uh everyone welcome and i'm so glad i could hear tandaraj sir and jagdamba ma'am speak about dna fingerprinting it is an honor to hear them and a pleasure to hear about what they have said in continuation with what they have said we are going to be conducting a three day virtual work dna fingerprinting workshop along with faba where we want all the students and participants to learn more about dna fingerprinting so this is going to be conducted in the last week of october from 25th to 27th of october the focus of the virtual dna fingerprinting workshop will be on what is dna fingerprinting the basics the principles and the protocols that will be that are used we shall also go into details about the applications and uses of dna fingerprinting so the types of cases that genome foundation truth labs have handled how they have helped society how they have given closure to families and how it has helped people get you know closure in terms of legal as well as medical medical conditions and cases we'll also be having case studies presented by eminent scientists and they'll be talking to us about their sensational cases in this workshop as well for all those who are interested be they students phd scholars faculty or industry professionals we request you all to join in sign up and join in for the virtual dna fingerprinting workshop all the details regarding the workshop the queries can be asked on the website listed over here or the email address or the mobile number or you can also talk to anyone at faba and on their page also it will be available the flyers will be circulated shortly we all welcome you all to join in and enjoy this 3 day workshop thank you so thank you so much dr gargi for introducing our audience about this upcoming workshop and now with pleasure i have already posted the link for registration of the workshop in the chat box everyone so once again this is a virtual uh, virtual 3 day workshop which requires commitment of 3 hours per day 10 am to 1 pm um on 25th 26th and 27th uh, october and also if you are uh, keen on learning these techniques in hand uh, we have an add on option where you can physically visit genome foundation and you will be guided uh, by scientists like dr gargi and to hone your skills on these techniques uh, via hands on training that would be 5 days in total every information of how to register for that workshop is given on this website or you can also write to me at academy.faba@gmail.com i will take this opportunity to also let you know that there is another workshop uh, which is workshop on bio safety and bio security and the information of that as well is present on our website which is biofaba.org.in and so definitely visit the website for all this information and register one more thing as you all know faba members are entitled to 50% off on all the courses on all the workshops that are launched by faba and hence if you are a member if you want to avail this you will be um, you will be uh, enrolled in this workshop at 50% discounted price and so let us know through email if you are keen on doing that uh, because then we will provide you an additional link where you can pay the discounted price uh, and now for the people who are keen on getting the certificates right please in future do not prompt us in chat box again and again about the certificates this is a kind request in the meantime you may focus on gaining some knowledge right if you were that eager to learn even 5 minutes of what the speaker is saying you would find yourself on the other side of the road where you are more successful in learning and in um, being expertized at at a topic and so i will now post the link to the certificate please go ahead fill in and the platform is now open for a healthy discussion of question and answer with the speakers may i present the first question that i found in the chat box uh this is from neha she says i want to ask how this technique can improve the area of personalized medicine 
So how this technique of DNA fingerprinting can improve the area of personalized medicine. Uh, Dr. Tangaraj, could you please share your perspective? Mm, yeah, so I'll give a little bit background about the personalized medicine before going into detail. Uh, so you know that uh, every medicine we take, there are genes which metabolize. Okay. And the mutation in those genes decide whether you get therapeutic effect, no effect, or adverse effect. Right? So uh, one has to look at the variation present in that particular gene. And sometimes that also determine how much of dose is required for you. For example, I can take uh, uh, vitamin K epoxidase reductase complex one, that is a target gene for warfarin, okay? And uh, in US earlier, the dose has been determined with the very mild and gradually being increased and they optimize the drug how much they have to give. And sometime later, they found vitamin K epoxidase reductase complex gene is the target gene for warfarin. They sequence the gene, <clears throat> identify the mutation, then they went back to the medical record and they constructed the haplogroup and there are seven different haplogroups. And haplogroup one, which has a certain mutation, haplogroup two is not very significant, haplogroup three, four, like that. And haplogroup six or seven, that has a lot more mutations compared to haplogroup one. Now they took the medical record and seen how much of vaporin has been optimized to those individuals. And they found that uh, haplogroup one required 2.9 milligram of warfarin per day, right? Then haplogroup, I don't remember six or seven, and they found the record shows double dose, so six milligram of warfarin per day. Now you see that uh, the dose has been optimized without uh, looking at anything, gradually optimized. Now, when they looked at their genome, and that shows that the certain mutation requires less quantity of warfarin, and on the other hand, different set of mutation require double the dose. So now, if anybody wanted to treat uh, with warfarin, then from the day one, they can sequence, identify the mutations, and uh, decide how much of warfarin one has to be uh, given. Otherwise, it may take several months to optimize. Okay, so I hope that it's clear. So basically, this is also a fingerprint. So basically, using the DNA variations and you are optimizing. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tangaraj. There's another question for you. Is there any maximum extent of degradation of a biological material such that no DNA can be further extracted from it? No, it's not that uh, the degradation goes uh, with a well-defined way like what we use the restriction enzyme. Restriction enzyme, we use, there is a restriction site, it cuts exactly at that position. But the degradation happens randomly. Okay. So, you can see the random and range of fragments. You might see uh, degradation to extent that 100 base pair, right? From 100 base pair to, for example, there could be one or two molecules at uh, either 1 kb or 5 kb, for example. And in between, there could be 5 copy, 10 copy, or something. So from, for, for the sake of telling you, one copy of 1 kb region, 200 copies of 100 base pair, or in between rest of it. And if you if you try to amplify more than 1 kb region, we may not amplify anything. Right? If you try to amplify less than 1 kb, 800, there could be few copies and uh, you may have to re-amplify. But if you want to amplify 
100 base pair or 200 base pair that can amplify effectively. Okay, so that's the uh, answer. If you still not clear, you can ask again. Thank you so much, sir. Um, are there any more questions? Please go ahead and type them in the chat box. If any follow-up is required from the previous questions, you're welcome to ask. Okay. So I think, sir, uh, I think we're done with the question and answer round. So uh, may I please uh, now invite Professor Adana to deliver a word of thanks to the speakers today. Oh, um, <coughs> there is a question that appeared. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, whether digital PCR can improve this technique further and how? So digital PCR, you are just predicting uh, using your design your primer, try to amplify and it will give you some kind of prediction. Is it not really that uh, then once you predicted that you can go and do the experiment. Um, so there's another question. Is there any concept called touch DNA? Yes, there's a method called touch DNA. Okay. Which exists. Um, could you could you like throw some light on that? Uh, so it's not like you're taking uh, one uh, touching and the DNA. So I, I, I showed in the initial concept like somebody who has uh, you know, taking tea or coffee or smoking cigarette or something like that, where they uh, unknowingly they leave some of the biological samples, right? So taking out those materials and try to use for DNA fingerprint. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, and may I request the audience to please sign up for the workshop. Why? As you see, one of the questions in the chat box is, RFLP means what? Please explain. Now, workshop is the best area to get a wonderful idea about what RFLP is and how it is applicable. And so definitely take this opportunity to sign up to, if there are any queries or trouble with the registration, get back to us, write to me on the email academy.pawbygmail.com. I'll be happy to help you. And now as the time is limited, may I please invite Professor Ridana to deliver the word of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Tangaraj. Uh, first of all, apologies for the confusion. Uh, we, we should have approached you in the morning itself. Um, but um, anyway, that became inevitable. Despite that, um, within the short notice, you could uh, um, come back and then uh, uh, um, give the talk. Um, uh, really, I'm sure every participant here would have uh, been uh, enlightened with your uh, talk, uh, starting from the history of uh, DNA fingerprinting and how the DNA fingerprinting started in India and uh, the father of DNA fingerprinting, um, you now we can call Dr. Lali Singh as the father of DNA fingerprinting and diagnostics uh, and uh, who was responsible for the establishment of the institute for which you are now the director. And uh, so you have started with the basic fundamentals of DNA fingerprint and very clearly elucidated the technology behind and many of its applications, not only in forensic, but also in tracing the history of mankind, a revolution of man. And uh, several of your uh, uh, publications are um, uh, really landmark publications. Um, uh, and we are all proud of your contributions and Dr. Lalji's contributions. And Dr. Lalji has, uh, is responsible for um, the Genome Foundation establishment. And, and the Genome Foundation, uh, after Lalji Singh, Dr. Gandhi has taken up the responsibility and uh, passing on the, the uh, benefits of genome technologies, including DNA fingerprinting, uh, to the common man, and uh, uh, and very recently they have even entered into the skill development program. That's where Faba is really proud of, uh, very, very happy and thankful to Dr. Gandhi for um, joining us uh, 
in offering the skill development programs, not only online, but also hands-on. Hands-on may not be for many, but uh, uh, it could be in uh, batches of five or 10 per batch. And uh, so let me also thank all the participants who could uh, uh, bear with us uh, for the delay in uh, starting the session. And that became inevitable and uh, uh, thank everyone. And uh, uh, Dr. Menachi and Dr. Nidhi, both of them have really coordinated well and covered up uh, this um, uh, lapses from our side. Thank you one and all. And I must say that uh, Dr. Lal, uh, Dr. Uh, Tangaraz has agreed to give introductory lecture for uh, the workshops that are going to be conducted on DNA fingerprinting uh, whenever it is being done. Thank you one and all, and uh, maybe see you back uh, for the workshops. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Edana. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who's been able to join us today. And you were uh, very kind uh, to return at 4.30 for the webinar, as mentioned by Professor Edana. And thank you so much, Dr. Tangaraj uh, and Dr. Jagdamba, Ms. Aparna and Dr. Gargi. It was uh, wonderful having you all on this platform today. And may I please request the audience once again to please register for the workshop and uh, take the benefit of the knowledge from the experts, learn about the applied sciences. That is where the future is, where the science currently is and where the future lies. And so please attend the workshop to understand the applicability of DNA fingerprinting. Uh, definitely reach out to me in case of any queries. Do not forget to join us on Telegram. Everybody, we, want, we do not want to give you any pains of following us everywhere with the updates. And so we bring you the updates ourselves so that it's just prompted on your phone. So definitely uh, join the Telegram channel. And with this, I will be looking forward to having most of you at the workshop. Uh, thank you so much. Um, thanks for joining and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.